There's some mandolins, but what's this curved ball shape instrument, Mark? That's a, a bow back mandolin, or some people call them tater bug mandolins. That's an old one I pulled out of the dumpster. Somebody threw it away. <laughs> it's probably close to 100 years old. Wow. So I like restoring old things like that. They're a piece of history. They should be preserved. Now you were telling me if you preserve it too much, like, uh, you know, with finish, that it actually reduces the value. Yeah, some of them, some of them have a lot of value, some of them don't. It depends on who makes them. Uh, when you restore a lot of old instruments, like old Martins, you don't want to, you really don't want to mess with the finish. They want to, you want to keep them in original condition. You want to just restore the structural issues and make it playable because when it has a certain value in original condition so if the bridges are coming apart the backs coming off or there's cracks you want to structurally repair those cracks and put the bridge back to original condition stuff like that you don't actually want to sand the finish or change the finish you can clean it and, and replace frets and broken, you know, you try to repair old tuners if you can or you find, you know, vintage tuners that match. So you want to try to keep their original condition of those old instruments. That's when they hold their, keep their value. Do they keep their value based on just their original form or how they sound or how they look or all of the above? I mean, all of the above, actually, some older instruments are collectible and some aren't mm -hmm. and like some, the old martins have gone sky high pre-war martins are worth <laughs> could be worth a hundred thousand dollars wow you know some some of the d28s and stuff like that that are pre-world war ii are, are very very valuable instruments whether they sound good or not right yeah Wow. And most of them generally sound pretty darn good. It's because Martin makes incredible guitars. I mean, I've noticed from just playing, uh, I've never had a Martin. I don't think I've been able to afford one. <laughs> but uh, they, they seem to be just awesome sounding guitars no matter which Martin I pick up. They are amazing guitars and they're, they're pretty much what all modern guitars are patterned after. Really? Okay. The, this, the X-Brace that C.F. Martin designed to handle steel strings is being produced by every manufacturer today. They all use some form of that X-Brace. Yet, most guitar companies just don't sound as good as Martin. Why is that? Well, in a production setting, a lot of them are just strictly profit-driven. Mass-produced. Yes. Yeah, and the attention to detail, the fretwork, the arching of the tops, the, the quality of the wood. You know, Martin goes out and hand-picks their wood. When they buy wood, like Bob Taylor, when they go buy wood, they're... Bob Taylor's personally going and picking that wood himself for his instruments. He's just not counting on a, you know, a, a lumber company to send him a, a truckload of spruce. Mm. So, and that all makes a huge difference when it's hand-picked. And some of the, the less quality factory instruments are the wood, them, the wood themselves that, that the necks are made out of. It's, you know, it's rubbery, it's not as stiff grain lines per inch is is wider which makes the wood weaker so over time those nicks bow more than you know a, a quality piece of wood so how important is the weight of the instrument it's uh, a huge factor uh, mass in a guitar kills tone hmm. as a luthier you're trying to build a guitar to as light as you can get it before it actually collapses. You, you're trying to build it right on that edge to get as light an instrument as you can build. That's, that's why I go out and get a lot of old pianos and 
preferably if they're 100 years old, that 100-year-old that spruce in the pianos translates into really light bracing that I can do in my guitars because the strength of it is really strong. It's really a dense spruce, so I can make my braces light, I can scallop them smaller than normal, and still have the strength in that top to resist string tension. You know, there's 188 pounds, give or take a few pounds of string, still string tension on a guitar. It wants to fold that guitar up. Mm -hmm. So that, that top has to be pretty, pretty strong. Why is older wood better? It's, they call it old growth. It has more grain lines per inch, but there's mm. a, there's a misnomer on a lot of old growth. A tree has growth rings, mm -hmm. so if you go out and chop a tree down, the inside rings could be a thousand years old, but that very outer ring's only a year old. Right. Because it just grew. That's why they quarter saw those trees. That's the strongest a board can be, is quarter sawn. Okay. Slab sawn, if they take the tree and slab saw it, those slabs aren't as strong as a, as a quarter sawn board when they quarter it and that grain is straight up and down. That's, that's most instruments you want to build from quarter sawn wood because that's the greatest strength. So you can have a smaller piece of wood that's actually stronger than a bigger flat sawn piece of wood. Hmm. It'll resist warping and breakage, you know, better than a, a slab flat sawn cut piece.